Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Now, it's been many, many years since I started the low FODMAP diet. So I have been in the maintenance phase for a very long time now. And I thought it would be interesting today to talk to you and let you know a little bit about how I have got on with the low FODMAP diet many years after you know starting it, um, how it's helped me, if it's helped me completely, if it hasn't, what I think of it. And also Mark's been doing it as well. So I thought I could let you know how he has been helped by it compared to me. So just a really quick video today, but something that might be useful and interesting to you guys who are currently on the low format diet, have been on it and not found it helpful, or those maybe considering it. Um, so yeah. So right back at the beginning when I started the low format diet, so many years ago now with a dietitian, I, you know, in the elimination phase, I removed loads of different foods from my diet and then gradually as the low format diet progresses, I started to reintroduce foods and see what agrees with me and what doesn't. And yeah, that's really helped me be able to realize the foods that I really, you know, my body doesn't, it almost rejects and doesn't agree with. Um, and the foods that I originally removed from my diet as part of that elimination phase that I actually can eat. So for instance, I am very much able to eat sort of anything with lactose in it. So a lot of dairy products are something that people who are, you know, who go through the low format diet, a lot of them continue to not be able to have lactose. And that's sort of those things that um, they can't have. But for me, I could have that. And there's lots of other little things that I can have and can tolerate very well. Um, but then there's things that I still can't to this day tolerate. So for instance, garlic, onion, um, gluten, obviously, and, quite a few, there's there's tons of things, but those are always the three things that I think of the most because for, for instance, gluten is in so many things, garlic and onion are hidden in so many things. So those are the things that I'm the most, most, most careful about. Um, and there are a ton of other things as well because my stomach's rubbish. But yeah, the, the low format diet really helped me be able to pinpoint those very particular foods that I can't eat um, and also show me that once I remove those foods from my diet, that there were other foods that, for instance, I discovered for the first time because I had to try to incorporate other things into my diet. Um, and also foods that I thought that I might not be able to eat, I actually could eat um, once I realized what the baddies were essentially. So you might think that by me knowing the foods that really, really aggravate my stomach and removing them essentially over so many years that I would be, I wouldn't, I would never say the word cured, but basically 100% better. So I guess that is cured. Um, but yeah, you'd imagine that I wouldn't be having any symptoms, but that really, really isn't the case. So although I have successfully in a way um, gone through the low FODMAP diet and continue to sort of use it in a maintenance phase and probably will forever, um, there is so much more to, you know, how, you know, helping your gut than just being on some random diet essentially. And I don't truly believe that the low format diet for me personally has helped me amazingly. It's helped me to a degree, but it sort of then just stopped. So yeah, I think I hit that ceiling point with the low format diet and I'm still at that ceiling point. It's been quite a few years now since I was in the maintenance phase and I just like, it's helped me to a point and then it's not really helped anymore. And I think that's because there are like other factors involved. So my gut health started to really deteriorate when I went through a relatively stressful period of time. So whilst I was like starting university and not having a very good time with it. Um, and as soon as that started to happen, my gut just decided to hate me and make matters so much worse than just the stress in my head. Then I had like a stressful gut and it was just going all over the place. Um, so yeah. I think it's not just about like those high FODMAP foods aggravating you, but it's also, for me, it was also about the stress. And on top of that, I find that it's not just about those foods that are high FODMAP. There are foods that are classed as completely, really low FODMAP foods, and I still personally struggle with them. So clearly the low FODMAP diet for me has helped to a point. So with identifying that garlic and onion, as well as gluten and, all the other things that I'm never going to list ever again because it's boring, um, you know, irritate my stomach. But there are things that the low FODMAP diet would say shouldn't irritate my stomach that actually do. So yeah, the whole ceiling point is 
is real. It's so true for me. I am really glad that I did the low FODMAP diet. It has helped me and for that, I'm really grateful. Identifying those foods has been a lifesaver and it's something that without doing it, I don't think I would have realized and I wouldn't have been to understand why similar foods were really hurting me. It just really didn't make sense to me before. And for someone like Mark, he actually found that the low FODMAP diet has helped him more like, you know, if I say it's helped me, 65% or something, it's probably helped him nearer 90%. Like his symptoms are almost entirely gone, bar like the odd day where they just flare up like crazy. But most of the time, Mark is completely fine. And he did the low format diet like me with a dietitian and has found that it was just really good. His triggers completely different to mine. Um, and if he takes, you know, doesn't eat any of those triggering things, he's fine and that's really really good so it's something that I'm not going to say I would recommend going on the low FODMAP diet but what I would say is that it's really really important if your gut is not as it should be it doesn't feel quite right to definitely go and see a doctor and maybe chat to them about the low FODMAP diet you know obviously they'll give you options but if they give you the option to go and see a dietitian I would highly highly recommend it because for me learning more about my gut and what foods were good and what foods weren't so good for it and just learning about the low FODMAP diet in a proper way has really really helped me um, and I'm really really grateful for that. So there we go I hope you've enjoyed this video sort of a little not an update video but the low FODMAP diet for me a few years on from when I first started it just speaking about it when you get to that more like later stage the maintenance phase because so many people just think of it in terms of that elimination phase when there is so much more to the diet that elimination phase is such a short period of time compared to how long you might be on the maintenance phase so you know it's something that we really should talk about and it's really important to well personally i think it's important for me to just give my personal perspective so that other people can just listen if you want to <laughs> but yeah let me know in the comments below if for instance you are on the low format diet if your doctor or dietitian or ever recommended that you shouldn't go on the low format diet or they recommended you did and you did it or you didn't or you started it and didn't complete it all those different things anything about the low format diet and your personal experience just drop it in the comments below because i'm a nosy parker and everyone else watching this video probably is nosy too so drop them below and i will check them all out Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, head over to Instagram and follow me over there for, I do, I, there is something that I'm doing quite a lot at the moment actually called the low FODMAP lowdown where I'm just sort of chatting through the products that I'm showing or the recipes that I'm showing and talking about sort of the low FODMAP-ness of them or not <laughs> as it were. So yeah, check me out on Instagram if you want a little bit more of that and yeah, I'll see you very soon. Bye.